So, do you really need a filament dry box for your 3D printing? Well, it depends. Depends on the type of material and how the material has been stored. All 3D printing filament plastics absorb some amount of moisture in the air, but some materials are more sensitive to humidity than others. Hi, I'm Ken of Wrist Innovations, and today I'm going to show you how I tested four materials, PLA, PETG, TPU, and ABS, and I'll provide you with evidence on how moisture affects each of them. I think you're going to be surprised at the results. So let's get started. I've broken down the video into the following chapters. Number one, running the wet filament experiment. Number two, reviewing the wet filament experiment results. Three, comparing the three dry box manufacturers models that I used. And four, my recommendations and observations. Number one, running the wet filament experiment. I used the Bamboo Lab PLA, PETG, TPU, and ABS filaments that I have had sealed in storage bins. I used my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer at the standard presettings for each of the materials. First, I printed a set of benches using the filament spools directly from my sealed storage bins as a baseline. Then I cut approximately 40 feet of filament from each material and I soaked the filament in water for seven days. See my friend Chef Luigi. Chef Luigi here. I have been soaking various filaments in water over the last week and it's now ready for your pleasure. First we have a delicate TPU. Next we have some magnificent orange PLA followed by some gray PETG and to top it all off fresh green ABS. Manja! If you are working on a prototype project and you need some help, I have the answer for you. This brings me to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you are working on any prototype projects, they can help you when you need a variety of parts. Besides making PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and lots of different types of 3D printing, including metal printing. You just need to go on their website, upload your design, select the material and quantity you need, and you will get an instant quote. Then they will manufacture the parts and ship them right to your door. Give them a try and I think you will be amazed at what they can do for you. Check out PCBWay using the link below. Now, back to the show. After seven days, I printed benches from all four water-soaked materials. Then I dried all four materials using three different dry boxes. The IBOS Polyphemus, the Fix Dry Double NT1, the Grat Kit Firefly. I bought the Fix Dry with my own money. However, I want to thank IBOS and Grat Kit for sending me their dry boxes for my evaluation. I installed my own temperature and humidity sensors, and during the drying process, I recorded temperature and humidity readings for each dry box. After the filaments were dried using the dry boxes, I printed benches from each material. Number two, reviewing the wet filament experiment results. First, I ran the PLA test. The IBOS and fixed dry settings were 50 degrees C for four hours, and the grat kit settings were 40 degrees C for four hours. Here's the raw data, and here it is plotted in a chart. Three dry boxes reached their maximum temperatures within the first 60 minutes. For the PLA, humidity also reaches the lowest levels within the first 60 minutes. The grat kit humidity appears to drop the fastest, and my theory is that it is a smaller single spool volume, so there's less volume to heat up and discharge the humidity. All the dry boxes seem to level out to a humidity of between 10 and 15%. Next, I ran the TPU test. The IBOS and grat kit settings were 60 degrees C for four hours, and the fixed dry settings were 55 degrees for four hours. Here's the raw data, and here it is plotted in a chart. The IBOS and fixed dry dry boxes reached their maximum temperatures within the first 60 minutes. So similar to the PLA. There was a delay with the grat kit because I needed to replace my sensor. So the delay was not due to the dry box performance, but more my sensor. TPU, the major drop in humidity takes place within the first 60 minutes. However, with the fixed dry and grat kit, the humidity continues to drop throughout the four hour cycle. 
I repeated the test for PETG and ABS and the results were similar. Here are the temperature and humidity settings for PETG and ABS. Now, let's look at the results of printing the benches under the various conditions. For the PLA, it didn't seem to be greatly affected by soaking it in water for seven days. All the PLA benches quality was either good to excellent. This seems to confirm why many people say that they're able to use the PLA without any problems, even if the filament has been sitting out for an extended period of time. The PETG seems to have more of a sensitivity to moisture. I didn't see any stringers on any of the PETG parts, but there were some surface defects. To be sure, I really should repeat the test on the PETG. Story. It had major failures after soaking in water for seven days. Stringing and defects were everywhere. Drying the TPU had a major improvement in the quality of the TPU that had been soaking in the water. ABS also seemed to be impacted by soaking in water. Drying the ABS in the dry box has definitely improved on the quality of the benches. Number three, comparing the three dry box manufacturers models. Now, let's look at the various features of the three dry boxes that I used in the experiment. All three dry boxes have heaters and deflectors in the bottom of the dry box, as well as fans to circulate the air. They all have a maximum temperature of 70 degrees C. The IBOS and fixed dry can hold two spools, and the GRAT kit has a single spool capacity. They can fit spool diameters in the range of 200 millimeters to 250 millimeters, and widths between 72 millimeters to 174 millimeters, depending on the model. They all have holes or vents to allow the moist air to escape. A unique feature of the IBOS is that it has a small DC motor that rotates the filaments so they are more evenly heated within the dry box. The GRAT kit has a remote control app to operate the dry box. However, I'm not really sure of the real benefit of that feature. The iBoss has a pre-sale price of $129.99 and the fixed dry has a sale price of $79.99 and the GRAT kit price is $79.99. Now let's cover my recommendations and observations. First, I recommend that you store all your filaments in sealed storage bins with desiccant. PLA seems to be the least affected by moisture and in many cases, people have had PLA in their shops without any special storage for months, and it still works. TPU and nylon are very susceptible to moisture, and I definitely recommend to dry them in a dry box before printing. For all the other filaments, it's a best practice to dry them in a dry box before printing, just to eliminate moisture as a source of printing defects. There are enough challenges with making high-quality 3D prints due to so many variables, so why not eliminate eliminate moisture as a source right from the beginning. Regarding the three filament dry boxes I tested, I think the best value for the money is the fixed dry double NT1. At a sale price of $79.99 for a double spool dry box, it has the main features of a circulating fan and a maximum temperature of 70 degrees C. If pricing isn't your main concern, I think the iBoss Polyphemus is a great choice. I like the rotating spool feature to aid in ensuring that you have even heating of the filaments. I also like the filament material presets and I found the user interface to be very easy to use. I also like the handle to easily remove the lid. The GRAT kit is a capable dry box with a maximum temperature of 70 degrees C and it does have material presets. However, I found the user interface to be the most difficult to use of the three dry boxes and I don't really see the value of the remote control app. So for $79.99, the price is a bit high compared to the other single spool dry boxes on the market. I hope you found the video to be useful and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, let me know in the comments below your experience with wet filament. Thanks for watching. Bye.